Hey everyone, I hope you're doing well and are having a flare free day. Thanks so much for coming to my channel. If you're new, my name is Em. I'm an endometriosis advocate here in Canada and everything on my channel is related to living life with a chronic condition, as well as bits and bobs about my recent pregnancy journey while living with endometriosis. I'm so happy that you're here. Now because the love day, the V day, the day of love is just around the corner, I thought what better video to put out today than a video all about kissing ovaries. I thought that this would be a fun little series leading up to Valentine's Day on topics related to what we think of Valentine's Day wise of kissing and chocolate, but not anything to do with Valentine's Day whatsoever. It all has to do with endometriosis. Today's video is an interesting one. I posted on my community tab uh, a couple of days ago, just a question on how everyone is doing. And someone posted about the relationship between endometriosis and kissing ovaries. And I was like, I have never heard of kissing ovaries before. I have no idea if it connects to endo or not. And I'm a patient as well. So I wanted to dive deep and see if there was any connection with this. And surprise, surprise, kissing ovaries has been documented to be connected directly to endometriosis and the severe form of endo. So thank you to that uh, individual who posted the comment. Uh, you really allowed me to dive deep into research and to present this video, so shout out to you. So today's video is all about what kissing ovaries are, the signs and symptoms of kissing ovaries, how they relate to endo, and how it's not related to Valentine's Day whatsoever. <laughs> so if this type of video interests you and you wanna learn more about kissing ovaries and how it connects to endo, then feel free to keep on watching. Okay, so what are kissing ovaries? Kissing ovaries is a term that is used to describe medical conditions where the ovaries in the pelvic region are pulling closer and closer together in close proximity, looking like they're about to touch one another or even kiss one another in the pelvic region. Now, this is typically seen on ultrasound techniques, imaging techniques such as MRIs or pelvic ultrasounds. When it comes to the pelvic region and our reproductive organs, we have the uterus connected to the fallopian tubes and then the ovaries. When it comes to the ovaries, they are typically not in close proximity to one another Another. They have their own little zone that they hang out in in the pelvic area, but when it comes to kissing ovaries, these are when they kind of pull closer together due to scar tissue that's forming, cysts, adhesions, and other conditions that may cause those ovaries to pull closer to one another. When we look at imaging techniques, kissing ovaries or close ovaries in proximity to one another is a telltale sign of something pulling or tugging those ovaries closer together and highlighting to doctors and medical practitioners that there is something that needs to be investigated because ovaries in close proximity to one another should not be happening. Kissing ovaries can be associated with other conditions and chronic diseases such as pelvic inflammatory disease, polycystic ovarian syndrome, and other conditions that relate to the formation of cysts or adhesions. But typically the sign of kissing ovaries is associated with the severe form of endometriosis in the pelvic area. Now when it comes to kissing ovaries, there are symptoms associated with the disease that relate to endometriosis such as extremely painful uh, cramping and pelvic pain, irregular menstruation. So if you're having periods that are heavier or lighter or they're coming and going not in the normal cycle that you have, that's when it's irregular menstruation, as well as fertility issues. So ovaries that are pulling closer to each other can cause underlying fertility concerns. So there was a kissing ovary study conducted in 2005. So again, when it comes to endometriosis research, we are way behind the eight ball and we need to put more effort into research and funding to like gain more data on up-to-date cases on this. But in 2005, there was a study done to investigate kissing ovaries and the relationship between the severity of endometriosis in the pelvic area. So the study investigated 722 individuals that had suspected endometriosis. During a pre-operative ultrasound, so before individuals had surgery, there was a pre-operative ultrasound that was conducted for each individual. Pelvic endometriosis was present in 309 of those individuals studied, so 43.5% of those individuals that had suspected endometriosis. 
The scoring of those individuals that had more severe forms of endometriosis, those individuals had kissing ovaries present. Those individuals that had kissing ovaries present during surgery had also a longer operation time during surgery when compared to those without kissing ovaries present. So during the study in 2005, those that had severe endometriosis or presentations of endometriosis had kissing ovaries. The presence of dense adhesions during the surgery were also higher with those with kissing ovaries. Now, when investigating individuals that had fertility concerns or fertility issues, there was a laparoscopic tubal patency test that was conducted among these patients. Approximately 145 individuals that were experiencing infertility were investigated. Of these cases, five individuals had kissing ovaries, 107 had pelvic endometriosis, and the remaining 33 patients had non-endometriosis related uh, masses. A higher proportion of those that had obstructions in the fallopian tubes were found among those that had kissing ovaries. In the five cases that were diagnosed that had kissing ovaries, dense adhesions were present between the ovaries. So again, other conditions can cause kissing ovaries to be there, but kissing ovaries in the relationship to endometriosis, there is a connection to a severe form of endometriosis when it comes to kissing ovaries present. In all cases associated with kissing ovaries and severe forms of endometriosis, dense adhesions were formed between the ovaries that caused them to pull closer to each other and like almost kiss one another. So really important to recognize that dense adhesion formation is a telltale sign for those ovaries to pull closer to one another when it comes to severe forms of endometriosis. Something to note too in this study is that those with bowel endometriosis presentations had a higher rate of kissing ovaries than in those with other forms of endometriosis. Individuals dealing with fertility concerns and had kissing ovaries are ultimately at risk to have more severe formations of endometriosis present. In conclusion of this report, again, what I've reiterated is that the finding of kissing ovaries on ultrasound prior to surgery is a high risk indicator of severe forms of endometriosis. Often impacting menstrual cycle regularities can cause severe pelvic pain and compromising fertility. Finding kissing ovaries on ultrasound techniques, MRIs, or other imaging should indicate to the technician or the doctor to refer that patient to a specialized center for endometriosis care. This should optimize the patient availability for proper surgical care with an endometriosis specialist on their team, have fertility preservation, and ultimately reduce the risk of recurrence when it comes to endometriosis. So when I was reading through this study, it was obviously clear that when it comes to ultrasound techniques, usually it's the first line of defense when we go to our family doctor or a walk-in clinic when we say, I think I might have endometriosis. I don't know about you, but ultrasounds, I went through so many at the beginning of my journey because they wanted to rule out other conditions, which makes sense. If there's something that's causing pelvic pain or pelvic discomfort, we wanna rule out other things that might be associated with um, cancers or other masses. But in my mind, when we have ultrasounds at the first line of defense, which I think a lot of us have, um, we go to ultrasounds first before surgery, um, I think it's so important to keep advocating for ourselves and to recognize with our doctors that if there is kissing ovaries present on the final conclusion of our reports, that we want to be referred to a center of excellence for endometriosis, or we want to have that referral to an endo specialist in our country. I know in Canada, the wait lists for surgeries are out the door. There's like two years plus for people waiting for proper surgery and care for endo. And so the earlier we can get on those lists, the earlier we can support our health and our well-being and our livelihoods and our quality of life, the earlier we can preserve our fertility if that's something that you want to do in your journey. And it's just something that is so eye-opening and that I wanted to share with you today that it is definitely a sign to keep going in your journey, to keep advocating for answers and to get ahead of the eight ball. Kissing ovaries are a telltale sign of severe forms of endometriosis in the pelvic area. So again, I hope with this in mind that this video has helped or gain a little bit more information on what the heck kissing ovaries are. <laughs> I'm so thankful for that individual for posing that question on my community tabs. It really opened a discussion on something that I didn't know about and I'm sure a lot of you maybe have not heard about, feel free to comment down below if you've heard about kissing ovaries or have experienced them in your own endo journey or even in your journey with other conditions such as PCOS or pelvic inflammatory 
ovary disease. Again, kissing ovaries can be associated with other conditions, but again, when it comes to endo, severe form of it. With that in mind, I do want to recognize too that severe forms of endometriosis, and I've talked about this in other videos, stage four or the most severe forms of endo also may not present symptoms, okay? So it's really important to recognize that if you're not experiencing pelvic pain or pelvic discomfort, but you're experiencing infertility, for example, you may be suffering with kissing ovaries or a severe form of endometriosis. No symptoms doesn't necessarily mean that you don't have endometriosis, and it may not mean that you have a mild form of endometriosis. It just means that your body is unique and beautiful and your symptoms present differently than somebody else. The stage of endometriosis that you have does not dictate your level of pain. So just something to recognize that even though you may have kissing ovaries, it may not necessarily lead to extreme pain for you. So just keep that in mind, but really important to recognize that if it is on ultrasound screening, to keep investigating and to keep your advocacy going for more answers and treatment because you deserve it, your health deserves it, and I am rooting for you every step of the way. So with that, I hope this video has been informative and interesting. I hope you all gave yourself some self-love today and I cannot wait to talk to you on the next video all about uh, Valentine's Day chocolates. And by chocolates, I mean chocolate cysts associated with endometriosis. Can't wait to talk to you then. Bye.